with views about politics and the upcoming midterms. Guys, you're not alone. And luckily we have Lisa Zumwalt here to tell us all about elections and politics. And she even organized a website for us to directly go to. So she's going to tell us a little bit about that. And you know what? I'm just going to start talking, stop talking, and let her take the stage. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for coming on Wall Street to talk to us about this. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. And I really mean it. Thank you. Because I, I'm always disconcerted when the, the topic of politics comes up, midterms. There's so many positions, so many topics. But you made a website called Snap 2018. Tell us a little bit about it. It. So snap2018.com is a site that is an aggregate of like all the information that I felt like I wanted to know to try to understand the election. So there's data and there's polls, but there's also interviews because data, information only tells part of the story and you need people to tell the rest. So what kind of questions did you ask these candidates or, or voters or whoever you interviewed? So I interviewed three groups of people. I interviewed first-time candidates, and I did that because in my lifetime, I've never seen as many first-time candidates running. Generally, they're people in business or they're lawyers. Now we have people who are scientists and, uh, and activists and teachers who are running. And I was like, that's interesting. Why is it? So um, we have a couple of interviews uh, with uh, people like that. A young woman who's a millennial, a scientist in Michigan who's running, fantastic candidate, and a comic uh, in uh, Massachusetts who's running, who ran for lieutenant governor. The second group we did was I interviewed millennials because they're the biggest voting block in this election and in the electorate right now, 75 million. So what they do matters, whether they turn up or not. So I asked them, uh, you know, asked a variety of people what's important to them and whether they intend to vote. And then the third group is non-voters, people who didn't vote. That was 45% of the electorate in 2016. So almost half of the people didn't vote. So the question is, why? Why not? And do they plan to vote this time? So do they plan to vote this time? Or is there going to be more p participation? It's hard to tell. It's really hard to tell. And how about these first-time candidates? Why, why is this time around so important and different? I think it's great to look at Lori Bohutsky's uh, video because she kind of answers that. But what her, her response, and I think it's true for many uh, candidates, is they weren't seeing candidates that looked like them, particularly with women, right? The outstanding story of first-time candidates is that more women are running than ever before. They started out with almost, I think, 500, which is really a lot. And they're doing pretty well, by the way. But Lori says, you know, I looked at what was going on after 2016 and I just felt like if I don't see someone that looks like me, I got to get in it. I got to be that person. There's a lot of topics on the table, too. What are some hot topics that you found through your research? Well, I think the top issues for millennials are civil rights, education, and that's probably included with that a student debt, and health care. For the general population, it, it's close. It's um, gun control, it's immigration, and it's health care. But what's interesting about this election also is that it feels like there are so many issues and they all feel really important. Like in our, on our site, we ask people, we have polls and we ask people to prioritize, like what are your important issues? And I think it's really hard to do that because everything feels so important right now. Why is it important to vote this year? Is it really going to make a bigger difference than previous times? I think it is going to make a bigger difference. Uh, you know, we have basically a, a trifecta right now, which is the Republican Party is now in control of basically three branches of government. And um, so if you're for that, then you want that to continue. And if you're not for that, you're going to have to vote to change it. So what do you want people to take from your website? I want people to... The website is more information than any one individual is ever going to want to know, but what I want them to do is I want them to graze and find the things that are important to them. What I learned doing the website was that information matters, that, you know, it's important, like, for example, we often hear, like, well, half of the country is Republican. They voted in Mr. Trump, you know. Well, actually, half of the country is not Republican. The biggest party in the U.S. are independents. 25% Democrats, roughly 25% Republicans. Independents can go either way. So in my view, information matters. Understanding what other people think matters. Find, take a look, dig in, find out what matters to you. That's how
how I felt when I went to your website. It's very organized, guys. You have to check it out. Snap. 2018.com. I learned a lot from it. So yeah, even stuff that I was just, it's just very easy to browse. So thank you for aggregating that. But one more question. Will you have any other kind of snaps? And what does snap exactly stand for? Right. So snap was, uh, uh, means basically a snapshot of the, of the midterms. That's what it is. Um, well, it's an experiment. You know, I'm a filmmaker. I'm a storyteller. I never have done a site like this before, but this seemed like the right format for what we were doing, and I like it. So there is a possibility I'll go for 2020, for sure. Oh, that's awesome. Like I said, it definitely snapped me into reality. I definitely feel more comfortable looking at politics, discussing politics now. So thank you for offering that to us. And guys, make sure to check it out again. That's snap2018.com. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you, Olivia.